This is a little tutorial on how you're going to graph line data for your labs. In particular, we're focusing in this one on Lab Report 1. Now, one of the key points on any graph is you need to define how you're going to graph the data. So for our experiment, we're going to take the volume of a material and increase that volume experimentally by adding slightly more liquid to a graduated cylinder. And each time we add more liquid to a graduated cylinder, we're going to take the mass of that graduated cylinder. So our two pieces of data that we have are the volume in the cylinder and the mass of that material in the cylinder. Okay, So we have to define these as the independent and the dependent variables. Now, Independent variable is the one that you directly affect. We'll talk about which one's which in a moment. But the independent variable is always going to be the x-axis. The dependent variable is always going to be the y-axis. So our first thing we've got to do is we've got to identify our axes. So our horizontal axis is the x-axis. Our y-axis is the vertical axis. And we need to scale these axes. We need to know what the numbers mean. So we always want, in our case, what we're doing we're going to change it a little bit up later in the course, but for right now, we want linear scales. In other words, they have to go at a consistent value in between each of the dashes, or each of the lines. And we want to start at zero. So we'll scale this. Now all I've done is start at zero, point here, and then each axis I've counted out by one along here. So 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15. Now, we have to go back and decide which of those two values we had. The volume in the cylinder or the mass of the material in the cylinder is the one that we are directly affecting. That's our independent variable. If we think about it, the one that we're doing is we're adding volume into the cylinder, correct? We're taking and we're adding volume into that cylinder. So that means the volume is our independent variable. So we're going to label the x-axis, the horizontal axis, as volume. And you always also want to put the units that you're talking about. So we'll label it volume, and we'll say it's in milliliters. All right? That means our dependent variable, the one that is affected by what we did. Right? So by adding more volume in, the mass got higher. So we added the volume in. That's independent. This mass is dependent on what we did in that independent variable. So our mass is our dependent variable, the y-axis. Label it mass, g for grams. Okay. Now we're going to plot our data. So let's get some sample data up. Here's some sample data. Now I color-coded it, the volume in blue and the mass in orange, so you know it all fits together. All we want to do is we want to put this data on the graph, right? Put this data on the graph in the same position that it would be in the experiment. So for example, if I have one on the volume and one on the mass, I would go to the first position here, right? There's one, and then there's one, and I would look for the intersect point, and that's where I'd plot the data. So I'll do this for all my data, and I'll get a plot that looks something like this. Now they're slightly off where they should have been, unfortunately, the clipping of where it wants to put the points is a little off, but it works, right? So we plot the data down on the graph. These are just the four points that are in the sample data. All right, so that's plotting our data. Next thing we want to do is we want to look for the best fit line to this data. Right? We want to look for the line that's going to pass through this data in a way such that the points either fall directly on the line or I evenly distribute any points that aren't on the line above and below it. Right? Now we have a caveat. Since we're dealing with a real world value here, we know that it's zero volume. When I put no liquid in the graduated cylinder, there is no mass to the material in the graduated cylinder. Remember, we're subtracting the mass of the graduating cylinder out of this system. We just want to know the mass of the fluid in it. So that means that our line has to, by definition, go through zero, zero, right? This point down here in the corner, because that's theoretically what we would have at zero volume. We would also have zero mass. Okay? So we draw the best fit line that goes to this data. Now note, first two points are on the line, and as the line goes up, I can't get both of these points on a straight line, but I can run the line between them such that one of the points is above and one of the points is below by approximately the same amount. All right? That means this is the best fit line for this data. 
Now lines aren't always the best fit. Sometimes you'll need curves, right? A straight line isn't always the best fit to the data. In this particular case, it is. But sometimes your line might be an exponential curve. It might even be an S-curve, depending on the data you're plotting. But in this case, what we're looking at is we're trying to find the best fit straight line through the data. And this matches our data, right? Goes straight between those two, splits the difference between those, puts these two on the line. Now the last thing we have to do in the lab is we have to determine the density of the material from this graph. Okay, here's what you got to do. Density is mass divided by volume, right? Density is mass divided by volume. Mass is our y-axis, axis, sorry, and volume is our x-axis. If you remember your basic graphing mathematics, you know the slope of a line is its change in the rise over the change in the run, right? So change in y over change in x, which would be mass over volume, density. So the density of this material is determined by the slope of this line. Now here's the thing that everybody forgets to do when they do this part. I'm not asking you to look at the difference between two points in your data. I'm asking for you to look at the difference between two points on your line. Okay, So you want to find two points on your line that are easy to pick out, like this one right here, right? That falls right at almost 5.5, five, and this one up here is almost exactly at 10.10. 10. So I would look at the rise over the run between those two points on the line, and that would give me the density of this fluid. Right, because that would be mass divided by volume. And that's all you got to do for this lab is you've got to plot out the data that I gave you, well, that you can get from the images I gave you for the non-aqueous fluid. Remember, it's ethanol. And then once you've plotted it, you're going to determine the slope of the best fit straight line through your data. And that slope will be the density of your material. Thanks for listening. Hope this helps.